Lieutenant John J O H N Sandmeyer S A N D M E Y E R, uh, Marine Safety Lieutenant with the San Diego Lifeguards, uh, also a, a River Rescue Team Leader. Lieutenant, take us through, if you will, uh, what has what the call came in as, and what the uh, first first responders saw. Right. Uh, to begin with, we had a report of a woman that was in a tent and. Uh, she she was asking for help and she had self uh, dispatched by calling 911. She said she was surrounded by water uh, at her location. She described the trolley tracks and uh, various things she was seeing. Uh, we searched completely around the area. We're trying to get to her location. Um, she eventually cleared herself and was able to walk out of that location. So while we had a lot of assets tied up looking for her, including a, a Coast Guard helicopter out of Sector San Diego, uh, she was able to walk out after we were completely searched the area. But right before she did, we were notified by uh, MTS Transit Security here at the Fashion Valley Station that there was a man holding onto a tree underneath the, the trolley platform. Uh, we see this uh, the water level incredibly high tonight um, at, a, at a really above flood stage level. And this uh, gentleman was hanging onto the tree, just about to give up, um, had his head just out of the water, hanging on, and we were able to get um, two, uh, two uh, one a lifeguard with a river board to his location, and then a boat um, up to his location a few minutes later and just load him onto the boat with his last bit of energy. Uh, after that it became uh, uh, the mission to get that boat out of that cluster of trees because we were up against a really strong current and we didn't want the boat to get caught in what we call a strainer up against the trees, up against the current. Uh, so we were able to have to get a line to that boat and then use mechanical advantage to pull that boat upstream. Uh, with the, with the uh, work of the fire units on scene and the other lifeguard units that came, we were able to get two boats out there, get that line upstream, put a one point on it and, and pull it upstream to, uh, so we could clear ourselves from the hazard that was below. And you guys had some unexpected help from, I guess, just a, a person waiting for the trolley and the trolley guard. Can you tell us about what they, what they did to help? Yeah, well, at one point, um, I dropped a rope down to the victims. They, we just wanted to make sure that they were able to be stationary where they were and they weren't going to get pushed up against the, uh, the trees. So uh, I lowered them down my rope and asked the trolley security uh, gentleman if he could help me hold on that rope, secure it, and then pull up when they were ready for it so they could free themselves of some of the entrapment down there. So the, the passerby and the, and the trolley security really uh, came in at the right time to help out. Not only uh, call us to begin with, but then assist us with some of the uh, technical part of that rescue. Uh, tell us about the condition of the man that was brought in on the boat. He was in uh, uh, 
moderate to acute shock. Uh, he was hypothermic. Uh, he was really uh, at his last attempts at, at holding onto the tree in that cold water. Uh, he was very thankful. Uh, he was being evaluated by medics. They took him to the hospital. Um, and again, he was being treated for hypothermia and uh, shock to the system. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the call out for this evening and what you guys expect. So we, we're seeing this uh, flood level. Uh, it's just uh, incredibly high tonight, um, close to a 13 foot level. And, and I'm sure uh, National Weather Service is going to uh, give us some detail on that. But we are seeing that this flood level will continue at least until 7, 0800 tomorrow morning. Uh, so we are preparing to go back into the area tonight, check out some of the hotels that we checked out earlier, including uh, down by Taylor Street where there are some folks that are sheltering in place right now and just waiting for the river to, to, to go back down. Um, and this situation, when you, see, when you see water that's even way steep, remind us again, do I try to walk through it? Yeah, it's, it's tremendously uh, dangerous to walk through any moving water. Um, even even non-moving water, there could be blown man, uh, whole uh, utility covers, any sort of hazards that you could trip in and, and fall. And just in this uh, slow moving water through the parking lot here, it's tremendously, it just puts so much force on your body and you can feel it as you're, as you're moving through. And we're in dry suits, fins, uh, flotation equipment. Um, but for the average person that's trying to walk through, it definitely gonna be knocked off their feet, uh, put in a position where they just don't wanna be, especially without flotation. So we see anything over a foot and a half, it's just you just don't wanna be uh, walking through that type of water. Uh, we do see a foot of water can even move a vehicle. So we caution people against driving into moving water uh, at all times. Is this the most technical rescue you guys have done uh, over the last 24 hours? Or? Uh, yes, this one was a, uh, a two point rescue and then uh, ultimately a, uh, a one point. What that means is at one point we had two lines coming off the boat at two different anchor points. Eventually we put it to one point anchor and then we were able to use mechanical advantage to pull the boat upstream, which was necessary because it was so strong up against the four people that ended up being in the boats, three rescuers and the victim. And just to get that, uh, just to get the boat upstream with those four persons, all with all the water and all the other equipment, uh, took a lot of energy. And, and that was uh, completed by the, by the units that were able to um, secure that anchor point. Can we just confirm, because we, we saw another gentleman that appeared to be soaking wet. Uh, this was just one person? Yeah, so we ended up having a second victim that walked up who had fallen in the water earlier. I, I had spoke to him during the call and told him, hey, we'll get you a blanket as soon as we get this guy cleared up. And then he told me his story. He had fallen in the water. Uh, he self-rescued. He climbed up the stairs and just sat himself down on the platform. So we were conscious that we did have a second victim. He was stationary. I was able to talk to him and knew that he was going to be stable. Uh, but it was the, it was the guy that was underwater for a while that, that we were really concerned about. Do we know why these two people, maybe for different reasons, but do we know why each one of them was in the area? Uh, no, it, it was uh, obvious that he was uh, he shouldn't have been where he was. He could have been trying to walk through uh, the water, or he could have been uh, in the bushes at one point waiting it out and then decided he was going to try to, to get out. Um, you know, you never know what the water level was just kept increasing through the night. Even when we thought it was going to decrease at 1130 or so, it just came down in, in buckets again. So we saw that uh, it was pretty significant rain throughout the evening. And uh, it really showed in the, in the water level we're seeing down here on the west side of the San Diego River.